Welcome to Classic Game Room. Do you ever feel bad for the Cobra Soldiers and Strato Vipers for always being on the losing team? Well, now it's their chance to win in G.I. Joe, the Atlantis Factor on the NES. Cobra Commander's the most incompetent asshole ever. You can quote me on that. Yo, Joe! G.I. Joe is there, fighting for freedom over land and air, more like slowly stumbling through levels getting yourself killed in this game. G.I. Joe the Atlantis Factor should have been called G.I. Joe, a lesson in frustration. So these must be imposter Joes. You know, you know, like back in the day in the 80s, you'd go to a grocery store or a drugstore or something and beg your parents or your mom or dad or whatever to buy you a G.I. Joe figure, but all they had is like crappy Chinese knockoff toys. That's who these are. The real Joes would have wiped Cobra out in 22 minutes flat and still have time to hit the bar afterwards because you know Shipwreck was always buying. These fake Joes must be like, like Freedom Force USA. Fighting for freedom over ice and dirt. Anyway, let's get started. The map and menu structure here looks a lot like another Capcom game, Bionic Commando. But that's where the similarities end, because Bionic Commando was actually pretty good. G.I. Joe the Atlantis Factor has some interesting ideas and the G.I. Joe license, but on the whole it's a pretty generic game and has one of my biggest pet peeves ever in video games. Regenerating enemies. I hate regenerating enemies. I think that's just sloppy programming. Like it took the developers too much work to make the game remember that you just shot that guy on a ledge so when you fall off the ledge and climb back up, he's there again. How rewarding. You know, if that's how the game is going to be, the Joes should just go home and call the Transformers to finish the job. This is beneath them. Anyway, Cobra Commander is up to his usual douchebag tricks and somehow figured out how to raise the lost continent of Atlantis and, I don't know, launch missiles from it or something. The least competent evil leader in the universe raised at Atlantis. Cobra Commander. You know, if he was smart, he would have just created a reality TV show about the Baroness. Rolled in the money and retired. Because he sucked at being a bad guy, let's be honest. He was terrible. He made Starscream look competent. Now one of the neat features here is that as you play your way through the game, or as you attempt to play your way through the game, you unlock new Joes to bring into battle with you, and you level up their weapons. You hit select to switch between your weapons, your Fists of Fury and G.I. Joe laser gun. You can also choose your path through the game. Do you want a slow death or a quick one? Either way, it'll be painful. Now this comes from the era on the NES when games like this were insanely hard. Before the internet, us kids had nothing to do except memorize them. We just sat around and played video games, and there were no cheat codes online because there was no online. You had to hope your Nintendo Power Magazine had some tips for you, which it usually didn't. Like, just give me the damn codes! Well, okay, here you are. Men from the future give you codes! So you can unlock all of the Joes in the game and Storm Shadow, even, even though he was a bad guy at level 4, no less. Now you can swap between Joes in combat, which is pretty cool, and if one of your characters gets killed off in battle, which of course, in the TV show, they never did. Oh, look, they're gonna shoot down my F-14 with an ICBM thermonuclear weapon, but I'm, I'll just eject and I'm fine. Uh, where was I going with that? I don't know. I can't believe Rock and Roll isn't in this game. Like, he was the baddest-ass Joe of them all. The rest of the Joes are a bunch of pussies compared to Rock and Roll and Roadblock. Now, at least Roadblock is in this game. But without any public service announcements, there's really very little he can do. If only he could warn children not to play with matches or jump their bikes over live power cables. Now, my theory is that even though some of the other Joes like Flint got more attention as being the ladies' man and Don Johnson played Falcon, that rock and roll had Scarlet's number on speed dial. Oh yeah, w which in the 80s meant he memorized it and used a rotary phone to call her quickly. You know Rock and Roll never bothered to upgrade to a phone with buttons, he was still listening to Skinner on 8-track. As he should. G.I. Joe the Atlantis Factor was sent to the show by Mike from Galloway Township, New Jersey. This game is really only for G.I. Joe superfans and those who want to relive the ultra-challenging, side-scrolling, platforming days of the 80s. Sure, it has the G.I. Joe license and a password system, otherwise it's really not all that exciting. And now you know, and knowing, as you know, is half the battle. 